do we have the right business model for a circular loop? Well, we're all taught that good for the environment is actually good for business. Uh, of course, all bases on recycling should have these two foundations, good for the environment and good for business. Well, I would say this is not true. And that's a quite hard statement working with a recycling business. Uh, today, there is one major thing lacking within the electronic recycling within Europe today. We're actually missing one of the foundations. Good for business. We learned this morning from, from uh, Günther here regarding a new business model. Maybe we should have a re review of our business model. I will come back on the issue, on the business model. Good business. But as well, what is scary, we know that in Europe today, we are doing things that is also not good for the environment. Sustainability. Working for a sustainable society and company is not longer sustainable. Because if we continue the way we do, we will not have a sustainable recycling industry going forward. At least not within electronic recycling. So why is it like this then? Historically, electronic recycling was actually a quite profitable business. Uh, what we see is that the improvement in standard has put a lot of efforts into the recycling industry, which is very, very positive. Transparency on the value of the product is very important for all serious stakeholders. As well, the transparency on all the commodity prices that we see today is also impor important for serious stakeholders. But all in all, I could say like this, the profits in this business have been sinking drastically. And we heard it from, from some of the speakers before the coffee break as well, that the profits are maybe not there anymore. It's like the, the tide, it's going out. And it has done that over the last couple of years. And this is not only valid for the recycling industry, but as well for the producers. Because the producers are very hard on, on competition as well. They don't have an easy time, time. So, what do we do? And what is not working? Why is it like this then? Well, here is a couple of things that I learned over the, the, the years I've been working within this business. And that is... A very important thing. In 2015, CIVIT did a, a survey regarding what is happening with the e-waste e coming into the European market, what is generated. And what you can see on this slide is that only 35% of the we generated in Europe is coming into the official system. 35%. And you are good in math, realize that 65 goes somewhere else. Question is where? Do we have control over that material? Is that recycled in the correct way? Do we have a circular loop? For sure we could say that part of it is not treated in the correct way. Part of it is not coming into a circular loop. And part of it we have no idea what is happening with. This has to change. Unfortunately, with this, we know that there is quite a lot of illegal export out of Europe. Is it this we can accept? Can we accept as European citizens, can we accept as stakeholders in this business that this continues? And I would say definitely no. Definitely no. Something has to change. We have to secure that the electronic waste generated in Europe by you and me is treated according to correct standards. The regulation is there, the standards are there, 
and we have to secure that we treat it in the correct way. Well, on top of that, um, you and I and our kids and our friends are buying more and more equipment, electronic equipment. Today, electronic equipment is part of the interior design in your home. You have a new TV, you have a new stereo, you have new phones every six months, uh, you have new coffee pots, etc. You have different vacuum cleaners. And it's part of the interior design today, which were not a couple of years ago. Which means then that it's coming out more and more products. But as well, what we see on these products, based upon the life cycle, is that the embedded value is decreasing. In 2015, we, together with Boliden, who is here today, and Chalmers, who is hosting this, uh, made a survey on the material, especially on the, the Swedish and the Scandinavian markets, and the embedded value in the products is decreasing very, very fast. This means, of course, that the producers, they have a cheaper purchase. And the recycling industry has less revenue. What we could see very clearly is that gold, silver is going down. Copper is quite stable on the products. And looking at the aluminium, it's slightly going down. Ferrous is going down the drain. It's becoming less and less. But plastic is increasing. It's the only product group that is increasing. And it would be one thing if it was only one plastic, but we are talking about tremendous different number of plastic. And I will not even start to, to point out all these different short names. Uh, but there are many and they are complex because they are glued, they are merged and they are uh, built in a way to be part of the structure of the equipment you and I are buying. So, what does this mean then? Well, on top of that, this is a cycle taken from, from 2000 something. As you could see, the prices in the cycle has, from 2002, up till now, beginning of 2016, been in this cycle. This means as well that producers today have a cheaper purchase compared to 2002. How is this then influencing our business model? With my experience in this business, we're talking a lot about circular economy, we're talking about closing the loop, we heard that from, from the Commission this morning, but I will put a statement. We do not have a circle loop within electronic recycling. We have a linear loop, a linear business. It's linear, it is not closed. It doesn't exist, a closed loop, if we say that electronic plastic should go back into electronic parts. As you could see in this slide, production, consuming, logistic, uh, etc., and then eventually it becomes into recycling. Part of it goes back into to the business as secondary raw material. Part of it goes back maybe into a vacuum cleaner. Electrolux have one. Many other product goes back into something that becomes a flower pot furniture for the garden. We are today in the electronic recycling industry recycling, having recycling rates of, uh, depends on what type of product, between 80 and 90 percent of the product. So of course the material is used again. But as you could see here, which is, is quite interesting, the distance between the producer and the recycler is quite far. And I will come back to that because that is also the reality in the business we have. With the linear business model we today have within electronic recycling in Europe, there is no fair distribution of costs and benefits. 
As an example, tomorrow there will be a workshop uh, downstairs um, about neodymium magnets from hard disks. We have been taking part in a very interesting project together with some of you here uh, to actually see can we recycle these magnets and the rare earth metals. And yes, it's possible. It's possible. But there's no financial solution. There's no fair distribution of costs and benefits. The benefits for the environment is there. Cost? Question mark. We have to do something about this to have actually a long-term sustainable business. So, looking at this then, I would state that there is actually no one responsible for a circular loop. In Europe, it's a very divided market, I would say. Even if we have the WE directive, we have uh, Brussels saying how things should be regarding things with regulations. But just take a country like Germany with the number of Bundesstates. They have different interpretation of the same directive. This means as well, we in Europe have different situation. We have countries where we have very, very strong producer associations driving the whole business. We have countries where the recycler or the producers can actually make contracts with the recyclers directly. We have countries where we have one producer association. We have countries where we have 20 odd something producer association. And there are positive and negative things with both these scenarios. Mostly of the electronic recyclers have then contracts with the producer associations. But who is responsible then for closing the loop? Who is responsible for creating a circular economy? Is it the producer? Is it the producer association? Is it the recycler or is it the politicians? Unfortunately, and this is now divided depending on both producer and producer association, it is not encouraged to really build a circular business. Because many of the producers, they say, low cost, no pain. Which means that the producer association have the task from the producer, solve the problem. So, this is then the situation we have. But we have as well, many, many contacts with producer as producer associations where this is functioning. We have, for example, a work together with Electrolux where we can look at how can we close the loop. And this is as well encouraged by some of the producer association. So this is now linked to individuals and the drive from the different companies. There is no contract that Stena have today where it is noted improvement of the circular loop with a producer association. Even if some producers drive this quite hard. And as well, there are producers that actually say, we do not believe in recycled material in our products. We do not believe in recycled material in our products. We as stakeholders, we have to secure that we have a creative and an innovative area for the recyclers so we can thrive long term. This is a must, otherwise we will run into problem. How do you do that? My clear statement is we have to create some type of circular loop within this business. And for me, we need to develop three things. First of all, we have to develop a governance system that works. We have to secure that the 65% of the material that is not coming into the official system in Europe is treated in the correct standards. Otherwise, we will not have a sustainable situation in Europe. Who is responsible for that? Producers and politicians. Two, 
We have to reinvent the business model. And I think the, the ideas coming up this morning, I think we have to think a bit like, like uh, we had the presentation here. How can we do this in a different way? We have to create the business model with real value and inspirations for the industry. Because otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, we will not have enough serious recyclers in Europe that treats this material. Which means we will have a problem. Who is responsible for that? I would say it's the producers and it's the recyclers together. And we have to connect these dots between the design engineers at the producers and the recyclers to really see what material is used. How can we recycle it? What is the possibility? And here I would say we all as stakeholders have to do this. What happens in five years if we don't do? Well. I would say like this, we will have less recyclers in Europe, we will have higher illegal export, we will eventually then have a higher cost for the producers, which means you and I as consumers have to pay that because the cost will increase and someone has to pay it, which means it's you and it's me. And four, we will not have the possibility to actually develop recycling techniques. Which means, who will be willing to invest in, in developing recycling techniques going forward if there is no possibility for the market, together with the producers? There is a statement I would like you to read from Robert Swan that I really like. Um, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. The greatest threat to the planet is the belief that someone else will save it. And it's actually so, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you, it's up to me, us, together, to actually save it. And for me, it starts here. Thank you very much. <laughs>